Okay, this is uh, Keystone A12 video. I love this camera. This is a Keystone A12 16 millimeter camera. There's a few different varieties of this one. This one is called the Criterion Deluxe. I don't know why, because they all seem very, very similar. These cameras are not reflex cameras, meaning when you look through your eyepiece, which is on the back, you're not looking through the lens. So before you go out to shoot, first thing you do, make sure you take your lens cap off and leave it home because you don't want to shoot your roll of film to be just blank because... When you're looking through the eyepiece, you're not looking through the lens, so you would have no way of knowing. Right, John? Right. My name is Michael Rosso, and behind the camera today is John Fideli. <laughs> We're both of us here at HQ, filmphotographyproject.com. This camera is currently my favorite 16 millimeter camera. I use this camera more than I use my Bolex. Bohemian. And I love my Bolex, which tells you how I feel about the Keystone A12. Let's go over it really quick. This does not take the place of a manual. This is just an overview. These are 16 millimeter cameras. This particular camera takes either single perf or double perf 16 millimeter film. It takes standard C mount lenses. These are the same lenses that come with your Bolex. As a matter of fact, this is a lens from my Bolex because the lens that came with this camera was completely seized up. So, I'm telling you that because when you're shopping for one on eBay, please do right to the seller and say, hey. does everything work? Does the motor work? Is the lens fluid? Do the f-stops open and close? Can, they easily, can you easily focus the lens? Because over time, things do seize up. Also, really eyeball the pictures when you're going to buy a camera. You don't want to buy a camera that's covered in dirt. <laughs> you want a nice, clean, well-maintained camera. So what do you need to know about this? Well, first of all, I already mentioned it's a parallax, which means you do not look through the lens. Right now, I have a 16 millimeter lens on this camera, and this is the lens that it came with. And this camera, I did not purchase this camera. This camera was given to me by Mark O'Brien. The lens that came with it, which is a 25 millimeter lens, is completely seized up. It's completely seized. I just took a preferred 16 millimeter lens from my Bolex camera. Now, when looking through the eyepiece, because you're not looking through the lens, you want to make sure that the... I mean, these all these little tricky things, right? In order to sh see with this up, looking through the eyepiece, that is your 25 millimeter standard lens. I like to shoot wider, 16 millimeter lens, flip this down, and it says right on top of it, 17 millimeter, close enough frame speed it says normal 16 frames per second sound 24 frames per second my advice is to shoot either 16 or 24 frames per second i usually shoot 24 because sometimes i record sound on the side you can't do like very long takes because this is a spring wound here's the shutter button you're only getting 30 seconds per shot Here's your footage counter. Keep an eye on it. Each roll is 100 feet, about three minutes at 24 frames per second, somewhere in or about. I'm sure I'm wrong. <laughs> and then, of course, you have the option of putting another lens here on top because this turret switches. I don't do that. I just, you know, there it is. I shoot with the 16 millimeter lens. I don't switch lenses a lot. What can I say? I'm boring. <laughs> How to load this camera. Let's take a look and load this camera. We recorded that already. Thank God. Hey! You will open the, ca open the camera up. And don't get scared. Like, oh, <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? This is where the take-up spool is going to go. This is where your film is going to go. And you... Most of the cameras have arrows, so you can immediately see. Here's arrow going in. You're going to open up these gates. Don't use any violence. You gently lift up, and then these pull out. And here are sprockets. This, this camera can take single 
per film or double per film. So your film's going to go here, here, around here, form a loop here, go through the gate, come around the gate, back through the sprockets or the, the claws, and then out to your take-up. So let's do that really fast. Here's your daylight spool. Don't, Don't sweat it. It'll be fine. These cameras were designed for people to load. So people these days are much smarter, right? <laughs> And even says all sorts of clues. Says here, full reel. Right in there, full reel. There are all sorts of clues all over the place. Good, good. We're going to follow the arrow. Always pull out a little film so you have enough film to deal with. So you're going to put your film right through here. Through the first first sequence let's call it that and as you close this gate you'll be able to feel it grab the perforation doing a great job right john well, so far so great <laughs> ah. see you could easily like just, ah! it's just, it's just so i usually do this i take this i form the loop here's the gate it's, it's hard to see you want to get the film behind the gate so there, there it is. Let's close this up. Oh, that's good. That's good. This one's closed on the perforation. You form the nice little loop here. And there's a little, like, thing here where you can pull it with your finger to get the film actually in the gate. It's a little tough at first. I have to tell you, I was doing this, and I, I you know, I get this. Oh, I feel it now. Yep, I feel it's in there. I get the sweats too, you know. Good. Oh, there it is. It kind of just clicked. And that is a little claw in there grabbed a perf. So I feel confident it's properly in. Now I take this side, follow the loop. Oh, stoops. Follow the loop. <laughs> follow the loop. Make sure you have enough of a loop. Oh, nice. And now we should we should see some we should see some decent action here. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so one minute left. We have here. We're gonna put your film on your take up spool. Great. Here's your film counter thing. You want to put that over there. Put your film in here. Careful. Careful. <laughs> ah. Nice. Let's see if this works. Now you have to be careful of your loops. Here are your loops. This one looks a little too big. And you could adjust that very simply by opening this little gate and readjusting your loop like one or two sprockets, and reclosing the gate. Oh, that's it. Now, this sounds like a royale pain in the ass, but it's not. Once you do it a few times, you'll be a pro, and you will be shooting your home movies easy peasy, and you will be a film cinematographer <laughs> professional. Now that your camera's loaded, you will shoot your film. Keep an eye keep an eye on your footage counter. Many times when you're shooting, if you shoot often, oh, make sure your lens cap is off, uh, you will hear the film run out. And that's it. That's all I have to say about this. I'm sure there's more to say. <laughs> I'm sure you have some questions. <laughs> Michael at filmphotographyproject.com. These are great cameras. They're very rugged. They last a very long time. This was made in 1949. <gasps> and I recently shot a roll of the brand new Kodak Ektachrome in Baltimore for the HUN Festival, H-O-N Festival. And it was bright and sunny, and I was using brand new film, and it came out awesome. Let's take a look at some of the footage. Let's go to the 16 millimeter.
on. What do you have to say? Let me get a shot of you. Hold up the cannon. <laughs> and behind the camera today is John Fideli. How are you, John? I'm great. How are you? Good. Go ahead now. <laughs> do, do the thing. Go. Come on. All right. This thing is hot. Yeah. The camera's like, oh. <laughs> Hey!